and they aim to uh, promote a world that has a better quality of life for all the citizens of the world. Our Agrinet project aligns with goal number two. The goal, this is to end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. And so during the time we have here, what I want to do is to share with you a bit about the Agrinet project. And as Kadeen said, we will also do a demonstration of some of what we have developed. So the Agrinet project is an e-agriculture project that attempts to infuse ICT into the agriculture sector of Trinidad and Tobago. What we want to do is to move in the direction of a knowledge intensive agricultural economy. We want to improve our farm management and overall to improve the competitiveness of our agricultural sector. The Agrinet project, just to let you know, it's a project that has come out of the University of the West Indies and the main team uh, members are from the Department of Computing and Information Technology as well as the Faculty of Food and Agriculture. We also have on the team a number of other persons from the private and um, public sectors. As we, started the, yeah. as we started the project some three and a half years ago, we began by investigating, we had our own ideas, but we began by investigating what was there available in Trinidad and what were some of the challenges. We, one of the main challenges we saw was the lack of data at farm level and at national level. Several institutions were doing some bits in terms of promoting agriculture and moving things along, but many of them were operating with silos of data and we found duplication even of effort. Now, data at particularly at a national level, but even at the individual farm level, is really important for farm management. It's important for policy decision making. If we don't have the right data, we may not make the right decisions. It's important certainly for private sector investment in agriculture and for enabling competitive business in, in the country and certainly for export. So as we recognize these issues, we put our minds together and we came up with a strategy involved in open data. So open data, that's data that's freely available to anyone. And it has been, open data has really been, has really propelled development in many different countries. And today open data now is a fairly accepted norm throughout the world. Data can be uploaded to the open data site and from that data, individuals, companies, anyone can simply view the data but more important, develop applications that can use the data to solve some specific problem. So the Agrinet project developed two open data um, platforms. One is at data.tt and the other one at maps.tt. These platforms house, currently house a fair amount of data, agricultural data. We conducted a number of workshops, invited um, various institutions, ministries, and got them involved in the whole concept of open data. We also developed the maps.tt um, site that has a lot of spatial data on Trinidad and overlays of a number of things, including roads and, and um, some rainfall data and so on. So the two sites are there, and anyone can go to the sites and see them. And we, we did quite a bit of promotion to even reach where we are. We still have a long way to go in terms of open data concept here in Trinidad. And we 
hope and we expect that we, as we continue the Abinet project, these uh, two sites will continue to be uh, updated. Having the data though in one place is very useful, but what is probably even more important is to be able to build the applications that will use the data to solve real problems. We don't want just the data to be collected and they're just housed there and not being used. So we, uh, very early in the project, we addressed the issue of applications using the data from the open data sites. Some of the applications use the data and some applications provide data to the open data site. And as we go along, you will hear about some of these apps and how they have been used. So we were looking at uh, ICT tools, mobile apps, desktop apps, um, tools for farmers, for farm management. Um, particularly, we focus a lot on financial management as we saw this as a real need in the country. We done uh, apps for selecting the right crop to grow on that land, understanding your land and growing the right crops and tools for pest and disease management, which is a huge area if we're looking at really promoting sustainable agriculture. All of these apps have backend um, modules that will use the data and analyze it on a national level to be able to produce information on what's happening on a national level. How do we know about what fertilizer are used throughout the country? How do we know about what is the real cost of producing X amount of some given crop? So these are things that we addressed. So let me take you briefly through four, the four apps that we have developed. And this will be very brief because we'll see the demo of these uh, later on. So I'll start with the Agri Expense app. This is one of the first ones that we developed, and we still think that it's, this is probably one of the most critical tools that we can give to the farmers. This is a, a, a mobile app that allows the farmers to manage their farm as a business with data, financial data on revenue and expenses and profit managing the farm as a business. It, this allows the farmer to really meaningfully participate in any value chain deliberations and negotiations. Without that data, the farmer is really left out. He's producing, he's a, a, the major producer, but he's left out of all the, the discussions re, that affect his livelihood. The, the app having this financial data will allow farmers to be able to access loans, to be able to have financial data to support disaster payment systems. We even looking for Trinidad and Tobago and, and for the rest of the Caribbean, maybe the introduction of insurance and risk management associated with agriculture. And certainly we want greater private sector investment, but to make that happen, uh, we have to have the financial data on farm management. We also looked at one other issue related to, for exports of crops, um, the issue of traceability to be able to understand what has gone into the production of this crop. So our Agri Expense um, app looks at considers all of those things. It allows the farmer to input information related to the expenses, the farm expenses, and to have an understanding of the revenue and profit um, scenarios. The second app is, okay, so this, this is a, some screenshots. The second app is our AgriPrice app. This is an app that gives you the price of some 53 different crops that, has, that are grown in Trinidad and sold in the marketplace. All the data has come from Namdevco, who collects data at the various markets um, on, on price data. It can be accessed from the Namdevco website, but it can also be accessed on your phone via this mobile app, um, which is a pretty useful 
a handy tool to have. The third app, as I said, I'm just going to go through these very quickly. The third app that I want to mention, uh, let me go back to this screen before, um, you'll hear about an, on the average price, what we're trying to do also is to include some aspect of price prediction, which is not a very easy problem to, to solve. But I'll leave that for Kyle to discuss a little bit on later. So the third one that we want to look at is the Agri Maps app. This is one that we're really very happy with. We this is a very visually appealing app, um, and it provides information to the farmer or to any person about a land profile. What does my piece of land look like? What are some of the what is soil properties of that land? Land use. And particularly important feature in this app is the recommender system that allows you, that lets you know what your piece of land, what your farm, um, what crop is best suited for that. So that can be used by the individual farmer and it can also be used in planning. All these three apps that I've mentioned are freely available on Google Play. They've been developed for Android devices and anyone, anywhere in the world, can go and download these apps for free and use them. Particularly the Agri Expense. The Agri Maps one, if you're somewhere outside of Trinidad, you won't see the, the we don't have all the, the spatial data for outside of Trinidad. The fourth one that I'll mention is Agri Diagnose. And this is a, a really important app for the country. It's a pest and disease diagnosis system. It automates the uh, diagnosis of um, pests and diseases that are affecting various crops and the system also provides information on treatment and a lot of information um, that can guide the farmer in terms of how to deal with the particular pest or disease that is affecting his crop. So that's just, uh, there are some slideshows. Um, here, the AgriNet project, as I mentioned before, aligns with the sustainable development goals. And in particular, the goal number two, and I'll leave that just there for you to be able to read the goals, because we as a nation need to really understand these 18 goals, 18 SDG goals, and uh, the targets associated with each of these goals. For each goal, the goal is an overall objective and there are specific targets that countries have adopted and signed on to and want to put systems in place within the country to be able to achieve those goals. So AgriNet is, is under those two targets of goal number two. An interesting outcome of our AgriNet project is the way it has involved youth. Youth in agriculture, as well as youth in ICT. Youth in agriculture, as we spoke with farmers and we had several focus groups, we met with farmers on their farms, we met with farm associations. Many of the older farmers said that they're not too up to date with the smartphones and so on. But in every case, they said their son or daughter um, is very interested in the technology and they are involved in some part of the business. And we were really very pleased to see the excitement and the passion of young people to see a future in agriculture that is more technology driven. And that is almost a byproduct of the, the, the project, but it's a really important um, aspect because we have an aging farming community. And if we can show young people that there's a, a huge future in agriculture through more technology, uh, then we can capture more young people into our agricultural sector. Another interesting byproduct in terms of youth was the way it, many young ICT computer science students gravitated towards this project. For almost all of them, I would say almost 100%, the young people 
the, our students at UE never thought about agriculture as a viable career, that they had something to contribute in agriculture. But over the three, four years that we've been around, during the summer, we mentored large number of students. Um, they've been part of the project. And as word has got around, many more young people, young graduates, young computer science graduates, ICT graduates, are seeing agriculture now as a viable option because they can produce something that can be used in, in, in agriculture sector to really make agriculture sustainable. Right, if, uh, in a talk like this, I must make sure that I mention our various partners. We didn't work alone. There are a lot of institutions that have been doing really good work in Trinidad and Tobago and the rest of the Caribbean for many, many, many years. And so we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We collaborated and partnered with, with many institutions, certainly all the international and regional institutions like CARDI and CTA and FAO and ICA and CABI, many of those terms I, we, we learned as we went along in, in, on the project. But we also collaborated with many of the local organizations, certainly the Ministry of Agriculture, we have an MOE signed with them, and Nam Devko, who has been a really big partner with us on the agriculture project. We met with Met Office, with CSO, many of the institutions around, particularly who are data providers. We wanted to look at this, the Agrinet project, while it has focused on Trinidad. Initially, we have partnered, we've begun to work with other institutions in the rest of the Caribbean. We're currently working with an institution in Jamaica, and we have uh, had initial talks, not nothing concrete as yet, initial talks with other um, institutions in other Caribbean countries. The project and the project methodology is repeatable anywhere in the Caribbean. The app, for example, the Agri Expense can be used without any further intervention anywhere in the Caribbean, any farm in the Caribbean. For the use of agri-maps or agri-price or even agri-diagnose, you would have to have some kind of collaboration with us because that needs data that is specific to the country. So we are definitely open to um, working with any, all the, the Caribbean countries because we think the methodology, we think the output can be applied to any uh, country in the Caribbean and can really help to improve agriculture in the Caribbean. Agrinet has its watchwords, increasing TNT's food production through collaborative ICT research and development. And the project has brought together academia, public and private sector to be able to develop systems that improve our collection and analysis of data that impacts food security, as well as develop ICT applications that directly impact farm management and profitability. And so we think the AgriNet project has a long way to go that can really impact our country. I'll pass you back to Katie to introduce uh, Kiran. Okay, thank you so much. Um, just a note for our live viewers, we will be answering your questions shortly. I've seen some questions coming in already and I think you already answered one of the questions which was whether these apps can be used in Suriname. Okay. So you <laughs> sort of answered that one but we will be doing the demonstration and then we move on to answer the rest of questions that we've been receiving thus far. Um, just to note, just to share, that AgriNet has recently been recognized by the 2016 World Summit on the Information Society for its contribution to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. It was selected in the top five projects from around the world in e-agriculture category, in the e-agriculture category, sorry, linked to goal two, which, as we mentioned before, is to end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture, of course. So I'd now hand over to Kiran, who would do 
the first demonstration. Hi, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So today I would like to first present to you the Agrimaps application. So as Dr. Bernard has talked about, the Agrimaps application is really an Agrimaps application which has special features about the land um, right now in Trinidad and Tobago. I hope you can see the screen. So the application right now, what I've done is I'm showing a small demo. I've opened the application in Trinidad and I've selected our area so that we can see some of the information. So what Archimaps does is that it shows the user uh, a bunch of state spatial information about the land around them. So that spatial information, for example, may be like the soil series information, which is information such as the pH of the soil, the sand content, the soil content, the magnesium content. So as you can see, the, the Archimaps application really seeks to give the user a complete package of information about the area around them in terms of the soil and also important information such as the nearby rivers, the nearby roads, and things like contour and land use. So Agrimap builds on this data set, this raw data set, by going a step further and going to a recommendation system. So what Agrimap seeks to do and what it does is it it looks at a series of um, crops and it seeks to give recommendations about whether the crop could be planted in that, that piece of land. So, for example, as you can see in the application, this land may be partially suitable for the planting of lettuce. The soil may be too acidic, the composition may be optimal, or they, and there is actually too much rainfall. So, Agrimax basically aggregates the information that we've gathered from different stakeholders and makes recommendations about the land around Chiron and Tobago. Mm -hmm. How many more details can we do? So we try to make some soft recommendations about what can be done to like decrease the peak, to raise the pH, sorry, or to, put, to give more um, more water flow to the, to the soil. So Agrimaps basically looks at that. And also this is so this application can be used by just normal everyday farmers in looking at land around the country, determining what land might be suitable for planting of different crops. And also on a national level, this application can be used from a planning perspective to really look at how the soil across Trinidad and Tobago can be used for different things and what could be planted in different parts of Trinidad and Tobago. As Dr. Nanad has mentioned, this application is also being looked at for usage in Jamaica and we're in talks to get the data to get input into the application. In other countries, similar things may be possible and the idea is that Agrimax could really be used in other countries for this field kind of information and the similar recommendations are possible. Next, I'd like to show you the agri diagnosis application. So, as Dr. Dan has mentioned, agri diagnosis application which seeks to give farmers uh, pests and disease diagnosis of their crops. How it does this is that it goes through a step-by-step -step process in asking farmers different questions about the, the crop in question. For example, what type of crop it is, what is the disease that is affecting the crop, and just little things like um, the humidity of the soil or the, the weather conditions. And it, using this knowledge, this question and answer system, agri diagnosis goes through these questions and then comes up with a diagnosis of what could possibly be the disease affecting the crop. So, for example, I've gone through the questions already, and there, there may be possible diagnosis for this crop. There may be cocoa stem canker, or there may be the tomato bacterial leaf spot affecting the plant. So, if I select one, I can look at a bit more information about the disease. So, we can see the disease type, the scientific name, the description, and also, one second, sorry. And also, so we can now look at some causes and treatments for this possible disease. So for example, we can look at one possible cause, which is the casual agent. Um, it provides a short background, very short in this case. Other crops have, other agents have, might have more information. And then we can look at possible diagnosis. Treatment, sorry. So for example, for this crop, there may be a variety of cultural treatments available. So let's look at one. And so what it, our diagnostics do is really carry a farmer through the steps of trying to figure out what's wrong with this crop and then seeking treatments and possible 
causes about what could uh, how we could deal with the situation. And yeah, that's that's the basis of our designers. Uh, I'd now like to pass you over to calibrators who will take you through that application. All right, so uh, so we saw two applications so far, and the third one that we're going to consider is an application called Agri Price. Mm -hmm. Now, what Agri Price? Uh, so what we did with Agri Price is that we moved together with with what, what as we mentioned before, a company uh, in Trinidad today called Namdevco. Namdevco is the marketing arm. Um, the Ministry of Agriculture. So basically what they do is that they attempt to help farmers to understand you know, what the current prices and strategies to allow them to export their products or to, to move up the value chain from simply producers into actual uh, processors and you know, they can have a greater amount of value from the products that they actually produce. So as it is currently, Namdefco has a system where you can send a text message to a system and you actually get back a specific price for that product. What it also did is that it provided an XML file, sorry, an Excel file, which would allow stakeholders like supermarkets, uh, other farmers to be able to actually download this Excel file and actually view the prices for the various commodities and you know, they could use that to make some level decision whether it is if they get a good sale from a farmer or from a middleman in case of supermarkets or whether the price that in the middle managed charging the farmer is actually an acceptable, reasonable price based on the current market uh, prices uh, within Trinidad and Tobago. So what we did is that we realized that you know this is this is nice and this is convenient, um, but we could actually extract more value from this information. So what we did is rather than requiring the user to actually go to periodically check this Excel file or to have to type a specific message for this specific crop. We said, why can't we actually bring that information onto the actual devices and farmers and the various stakeholders within the agricultural process? So again, that's in essence what we were able to do. So here on uh, as displayed is that we actually have all of the crops that uh, the prices have been accumulated by NAMDEFCO and we're presenting it here in this mobile application so that rather than trying to figure out the Excel file or trying to go to the site and download it, you can have, actually have access to that information right on their uh, mobile uh, device, whether it be a phone or a tablet. The other challenge that we, we realize is that if you are a farmer and you, know, you have a particular crop to sell, you know, very often because of how prices change, you know, today the best price might be $5 and tomorrow the best price might be uh, $6. So rather than requiring the farmer or the end user, the stakeholder, whether it's supermarkets, et cetera, to have to actually go into the system to, to find it, we actually implemented a, a strategy that will allow the user to select which crop they are interested in. And then when the crop changes within a certain threshold, they will actually get notification that that crop increased or increased in prices as the case might be. Um, what we also are in the process of working is that we have captured this information over a period of time. Now, Defco has really done a very good job in you know, going through the various markets in Trinidad and storing and keeping record of this information. I think that currently we probably have about 10 years of information uh, uh, that have been accumulated on a fairly consistent basis. And, and really, you know, their work has been on parallel in Trinidad and Tobago as it pertains to um, data collection in the agriculture space, um, you know, that is a treasure trove. So what we're trying, currently trying to do is to show, you know, can we make a reasonably accurate prediction, you know, within a short space of time? Right? So one of the things that we identify is that farmers tend to know seasonality, you know, so they know the best time of the year to plant soil will be uh, in June or July, so that by the end of the year, you know, the soil uh, fruits will begin to body, flowers will begin to, to bloom so that they can use any various products that they have to use. Uh, but what is what is more interesting to them is on a week by week basis, is this the best week to pick my pumpkin to sell into the market, especially the highest price, right? So that's where the, the main focus of the prediction is, is geared towards. Can we predict, you know, with a certain reasonable uh, degree of accuracy, uh, the short term price that a farmer can actually use, which would help them to make decisions about when best 
that they can sell that particular product. On the other side of, of, the, uh, of the issue, the final application that we're going to demo today is an application called Agri Expense. Now, what Agri Expense attempts to do, it attempts to give the farmer a way to be able to keep track of their records. Right? One of the things that we realize is that when you speak with a farmer, a farmer can actually tell you, you know, this is the minimum amount of money that I could charge for this particular car uh, that I can sell this item at. If I sell it any less than this item, um, you know, they, they would incur a loss. And when we ask them, you know, how, how did you come up with that value? And the, the amazing thing to us is that they have actually kept this information in their minds. You know? So they have a, a, a mental record, and some of them even have a, a notebook that they might use. And they have been able to experience to say that, you know, this is the, uh, this is the value that uh, we can sell it in order to make a profit. And very often, you know, that actually tends to be correct. The challenge with that strategy, however, is that you can't take that strategy to the bank. You, you, you can't take that strategy to a financial institution, or even when you know, some level of natural disaster occurs and you have to account for you know, the crop that you lost. You know, it, it's really difficult for any institution to use the information that they have in their minds. So, Having recognized that you know, record keeping is a difficult process, we asked ourselves, you know, how can the mobile device actually be used to do that? And again, at the expense is our potential answer. So what we did is that we realized that um, you know, even for a given crop, so let's say a farmer exclusively planted potato, you know, they don't plant potato at once, right? So they might actually divide the lot of land into specific time frames. And what they have is, 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 is segments, and we refer to those segments here as cycles. So here on the application, we actually have a set of cycles which, we got, which refer to specific um, categories of um, or specific instances where the farm planted a particular crop. Again, for one crop, they could have multiple cycles. And quickly, just to go through, within each cycle, we actually have the categories that expenses could actually take place, right? So we are planting material, and, and again, for the sake of time, I don't want to go through all, but really we looked at the categories that would go into the input process and we developed uh, them based, based on that. And, and just interestingly, just to show you a bit, what we also give them the ability to do is to be able to generate reports. So again, what you don't want is that you put in information into a system and then you can't get it out. So this report, functionality actually creates an Excel, an Excel file, which we can then use to carry to the bank or carry to any institution to show uh, the various history that we've had on that particular data. And finally, in, which is of interest, is that we have an option that they can back up their data online. So again, you know, we, we, we have all at some point lost our phone or you know, if you think of a farmer, a farmer is in a very um, dangerous environment for a, a physical uh, an electronic device and traffic could run away could drop into a bucket of chemical, etc. So we don't yeah. want them to have spent so much time putting information into the system only to lose it because of an accident. So the backup functionality basically allows the farmer to synchronize that information online so that in the event that they lose their device, they just sign back in and then all of that historical records get populated back into the system as well. And what we're doing with that backup data is that we are analyzing that on a national level. So we can say, you know, this is the price of this input to the production process, and how does that differ based on the geographical setting within Trinidad and Tobago. All of that information is kept at an aggregated level so that um, the farmer's private information is preserved. Yeah, and with that, I want to pass you back over uh, so that we can open the floor for any questions that might be, uh, might be based on the application. All right, thank you so much. So we'll move right into the questions. We have just about 20 minutes to answer questions, so I won't delay that process. Our first question, I'm just gonna read through it. My experience in a homegrown, in a home agricultural venture proved almost futile the presence of pests, um, inadequate topsoil and manual supplies, diminishing returns, um, lack of positive advice from shop, agricultural shop owners, etc. 
caused uh, this participant to think that agriculture as a home-based project is not worth uh, my time. I believe this can be extended to the larger agricultural sector in Trinidad and also the Caribbean. So in your view, given the limitations with homegrown produce, which, which I can align to the agricultural sector, sector generally, how effective do you think the agriculture sector can be in sustaining the Caribbean? I'll take that one. The agricultural sector is so critical for the Caribbean. When you look at our sustainable development goal number two, to end hunger and to be able to feed ourselves, if we do not put the effort that is necessary into doing this and implementing strategies that can do this, we can see down the road where we can be have some serious shortages. So it is to find the right strategies and mechanisms. You talked in your in your question, you asked about you, you talked about the fact that you had so much problems with the pests. That's a serious problem that is affecting almost all farmers. And this, the most farmers, they go to an agricultural shop, the agriculture shop prescribes something. But through the, the agri diagnose system, we can get really scientific output as to what is the pest or disease um, plaguing this farmer and what is the correct treatment the the, the 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 input the data that you get in has come from experts in the field so that's addressing one area the, the tools that we have developed here we think are tools that can really help to sustain our project carbon and to improve the agricultural sector because we want to we want to move our culture not just to be able to feed ourselves but we're interested in exports we're interested in just being uh, competitive both locally and, and internationally in the agriculture sector so it's really important for institutions the government private sector individuals to really look at the strategies for ensuring that we have sustainable agriculture in the Caribbean Okay, thank you so much. And our second question, Kev Kevoy Community Development Institute in Jamaica is interested to know if the four apps speak to the cure for pests that affect sour sap in most Caribbean countries and why said pests does not affect sour sap in Grenada. Yeah, let me, uh, I'll, I'll answer that. Um, first of all, as you could appreciate is that the the process to model the diseases or the range of diseases that affect plants is difficult. Right? So how we're doing it right now is that we're going on a crop-by-crop crop basis. As so as we have experts, experts put information into the system, and then this, the system can make a diagnosis for that. So as it is right now, uh, sour sap is not one of the crops that we uh, have information for. Right now, as you know, usage of this platform grows and as you know, more stakeholders, stakeholders are involved, uh, we believe that maybe eventually, uh, not necessarily this year or next year, but soon, um, that may be one of the possible candidates. So a specific answer is right now, no, but over the course of time, as interests and as that becomes a priority, so for example, Grenada or Jamaica says, you know, it will be good if this is a, if this is included, you know, we can make necessary adjustments by partnering with the right institutions to be able to provide information. Okay, thank you. And then our next question, what is your plan to train farmers who are not ICT savvy, who do not have smartphones or reliable internet access? So over time, what we've come to realize is that you really need to, to, uh, to encourage the adoption of the applications. You really need to work through the farmers and have regular meetings with them. And taking forward AgriNet, this is, this is one thing we plan to do, where we would like to have um, training sessions with farmers and encourage adoption of the applications and really encourage them to just start to use the application and um, figure out how to use it and these kinds of things. Um, that's how we plan to encourage adoption and that's the plan we forward with. Thank you. On the question of sustainability development, does Agri Expense offer alternative economic development, for example, cooperative development, et cetera? Yeah, I'll go with that one. Um, the, 
we have worked with um, the ADB, we've met with them on a couple of, of occasions to look at the, the system they use for financing farmers uh, through loans and various other mechanisms. Um, the, the difficulty is that the data is really not widely available on the, the expenses, on the expenses side. So developing an alternative um, economic model, particularly you mentioned the idea of including what private sector investment, to be able to drive that process, you have to have the right cost of production information from real data, not just the models, and return on investment. A private sector who's looking, organization who's looking to invest in agriculture must be able to have information on what's the expected return on investment, for example. And without that data, we've really shut out the private sector, um, except for where they've got into things like the mega farms and so on, but not be able to sustain or support the smaller farms who's on a smaller scale. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to read two more questions that relate to the um, technological Isabi farmers. So one would be, with regard to the price notification system, do you have an automatic text message notification system as well, since many farmers do not use smartphones? And also, how would you capture information from farmers who are unable to read and write? I don't know if you think you've addressed um, I could answer both quickly. Yeah. Um, one, the SMS system that we alluded to, it's not an SMS system that we, it, it's not one that we created, it's one that was existing, what we built is that we built upon that. Um, so in terms of the issue about you know, a lot of farms not having um, smart devices, uh, what we have realized is that in many homes, there are smart devices. So even though the farmer themselves may not have device you know, they might have children they might have grandchildren who also have those smart devices so in terms of those su supportive services for the older technologies at this time we have no plans of investing uh, in any uh, resources towards that um, pertaining to the the second question is remind me what the first question uh, it was how would you collect data from farmers who aren't able to read and write? Right. Uh, what we did is that we have, at the beginning, we explored the potential of uh, things like um, voice, you know, voice to text converters. You know, these phones now have the ability to listen and understand from the suit from, from from woods. The challenge is, is that that accuracy is not at a level that we would like for our way of speaking in the Caribbean. Yeah. Um, so as it is right now, maybe as the technology progresses, that may become an option. But as it is right now, in terms of reading and writing, uh, this, the literacy skill is still required. Mm -hmm. um, so again, as we said, what we're hoping is that this provides a capital a catalyst for other members of the family to become involved in the um, in the agricultural process, mm -hmm. and, and that we hope will address this very good challenge. I so, wanted to add there that our re big challenge really is now the adoption of these apps by the farmers. The, there's several things mitigating against it. One is the lack of smartphones, mm -hmm. but also even when a farmer has a smartphone, it's not very comfortable, very savvy with the technology. You know, many farmers tell us, all I do is make a call on my phone, you know, I don't use any apps. Um, and so our, over the next, um, you know, year or so, this is where we're focusing. We've done all a lot of the development. With. What we want to focus on now is the adoption. And all of this really requires some further funding um, so that we're we'll, we'll, in the process of trying to get that funding because the funding that the, this whole project was developed under the RDI Research and Development Impact Fund at UWE. And that was for a three year period, and that has come to an end at the end of last year. So moving it forward, all of these things really involve some, some mechanism for funding. Okay. Thank you for that. Another question is, how often do you update the map and diagnose data? 
Um, so for the mapping condition, what we have right now is we have the static condition, for example, the soil solution condition, that's like the pH and the sand content and these things. Um, that was information collected by the Department of Geomatics in the UV. And it was it was um, referenced with data from a uh, survey done in the 1970s and 1980s. So this is the information that it started to so update that it would really require uh, going out and mapping the entire Trinidad and Tobago and doing a, a soil capability survey. Um, there are plans in the future with funding to do these kinds of surveys and update that data set. But for now, that data set stays out its um, so it's static. Other data sets, such as the, the, the rainfall data and the contours and stuff, we are looking at possibilities to update it. But um, the challenge in this correcting data there is that it's really, in Trinidad Tobago, it's really a static data source that we have. And it's not very updated very often. So we have some challenges to face there. OK, thank you. Regarding the Agri Price app, could you please shed some more light on the process of collecting the primary data and regarding all of the apps, do the apps in any way track data by sex so that researchers or policymakers can assess the sex of the farmer? Sex, male or female. Um, so the primary data collection uh, mechanism is, is done by NAMDEFCO. Uh, so what NAMDEFCO does is that they have outreach officers or extension officers that would go to the various uh, markets in Trinidad, and they would um, rec record the price and the volume of the information that's coming into the wholesale market. So there's about two or three wholesale markets in Trinidad. So they actually gather the prices from those wholesale markets and they record those on a, on a, on a daily basis and they feed that information to the system, which generates the Excel, the Excel report and we use the Excel report to populate the application. Um, in terms of sex of the farmer, again, we do capture some level of detail about the farmer. Um, um, unfortunately, sex at this point is not one of them. Um, the information that we capture from the farmer, as we said before, you know, none of that information is individually uh, disaggregated. Uh, all of it is aggregated at the at the sooner level. Again, and this is to protect the information, the financial information of the, that the farmer is used to put into the system itself. So aggregated, yes, but disaggregated on an individual basis you know, because of the financial issues. Okay, thank you so much. So we have a question. Is this project primarily for persons in Trinidad and Tobago? This project started off and, and uh, has been based in Trinidad and Tobago. But as several of us mentioned, we mm -hmm. want to see it as a full Caribbean-wide um, project. So the one up, the RV expense can be used anywhere, including Suriname, mm -hmm. which I think where the business is coming from, including Suriname. The, any farmer, any group can use the RV expense, just go to the Google Play Store and download it free. The other apps, because it requires data that is specific to the country, for example, the agri maps will need data, the spatial data related to that country, the soil data, and so on. And even agri diagnose, which we haven't launched as yet, um, will need that specific to the country. Because while there are pests and diseases that affect crops throughout the whole Caribbean, there are many that are specific to a particular island. So how we have worked with that is really by doing one-on-one -on -one collaborations with institutions in the various countries. And we're open to, to collaborating with anyone who wants to contact us um, and work through, see what they require. And we have a fairly good development team um, that we can put to work on, on these various um, requirements. So yes, from that and Tobago, but yes, all the time. Just a quick intervention. Um, because we have a specific question from Suriname. Um, Suriname is a special country from the standpoint that Suriname speaks like five or six languages. Right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's really impressive how many languages they speak. Um, as it is right now, we do not have any other language other than English. Right now, the, the support is there for the trans, you know, automatic translation based on territory. No, but I don't speak 
Portuguese, no documentary <laughs> or anything like that. Um, so again, the same basis that we say, if there's an institution, an agency that is willing to partner with us to be, to be translation so that these applications become available to these zones, um, those are options. Thank you. And with regard to the agri expense application, is it possible to have a web application that can assist the farmers, similar to the a CRM system? Uh, just to mention, as Kiran is sitting here, we didn't have time to show, but there is a web-based version of the agri maps. Uh, we have explored and we did expend some effort to create an uh, application that could work on Windows and on iOS. Windows in particular, and um, it, it, it didn't quite materialize the way that we expected. Now, the reason that we use the mobile device as opposed to like, the website is one of the things we didn't get to show was something like notifications. So if you could still see the screen, um, you'll notice that um, there is a notification there that says, don't forget to enter your data. Right? Now, basically, what that, the reason that we, we we do that is because we know that there is a challenge of remembering and, and developing the habit to be able to actually enter this information you know, um, consistently in order for it to be truly effective. So we were hoping that utilizing the mobile platforms help to make that possible. So right now there is no plan to create a, a web type system. Um, but again, what we want to do is to utilize the power of the mobile devices to try to make um, this or to solve this particular challenge, which is consistent entering. Thank you. A question regarding agri maps: Is there a plant disease distribution map? Uh, right now, there. No. So, what one of the things we want to be looking forward is really deeper integration of the existing applications. Um, with regards to that specific question, we don't. Like, I don't know. We don't exactly have that information, but looking forward, we could probably look at integrating um, the pest information with the maps and see what possibilities exist there. One of the things we, we notice is that there's really a lot of possibilities between the applications to do further things. It's just we need um, it's just we need to integrate it and we need to the necessary to, to the integration. Because what we would like to have once the API diagnosis comes on stream and we have diagnosis being done throughout the country to be able to show the spread of diseases and to be able to trace it and, and, and map it. So that's in the plans, but the, the app hasn't been rolled out as yet. So we, we know we are near reaching that. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. So I know we have just a few more minutes and we have quite a few more questions. I think our guests would be here with us. You can be here with us for the next 10, 15 yes. minutes, right? But for those of you who have to leave, um, persons are asking if the presentations can be made available to, um, yes. yeah, so how can these presentations be made available? If, you, if they can share their email, we yeah. can, or we can yeah, have it on the website. Yeah, we, have yeah, we can have it on the website. That's perfect. Yes. So we will have the... Can you put the last slide on the, um, on the PowerPoint? We have a contact, contact on the website there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We will put up the presentation on our website. Okay. We will. And at the end of this, we will again share the contact information for Dr. Margaret Bernard and her team. And we'll have it on both websites so that you can view the presentations there. So just moving along to the other questions. What is the marketing plan to be rolled out by the project to reach the target audience and achieve as much penetration and coverage of all stakeholders? That's a million dollar question. Um, we have looked at several strategies. Most of them involve some kind of financing, which we don't have. So what we've done is through the collaborations that we've set up just one-on-one, -on -one, we have done a, a quite a bit of training with the extension officers. For example, we did sessions with Centeno. We did a, 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 quite a number of training sessions with the extension officers. Uh, we've also met with several farmers associations and where they've invited us to do a presentation, say, on the apps at their um, one of their meetings. But it's not in a concerted way, uh, uh, you know. And so 
we have submitted a proposal for further funding on the project, and that that um, proposal does have a clearly defined uh, marketing strategy, a rollout strategy for adoption. Because I think it, at this stage, that's really the the next step to move the, the project forward. Thank you. And are there plans in the Caribbean, as far as you know, of course, to protect the agricultural sector against giant GMO companies? No, I, I think that's beyond where we could talk about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we will have to say we don't know any such, and we're not in a position to speak of it. Thank you. So what would you recommend on the topic of growing cocoa in Trinidad and Tobago? There's a, a huge move to reviving cocoa in Trinidad and Tobago, and there are several institutions and groups working and making very good progress in reviving cocoa estates. And and I know we've worked um, quite a bit with Professor Umu Horan at the um, Cocoa Research Institute at UWE. Um, we cocoa is one of the crops that we have have some data for in the agri diagnosis. We have data, the pest and disease that information for cassava, for cocoa. I think we have something like about 93 um, pests and diseases related to cassava. And we're working with the Cocoa Institute for the modeling and input of data related to pests and diseases for cocoa. Um, there is a lot, a lot of potential for growing cocoa, and and we we're hearing in the news all the time the moves in terms of chocolate and the high quality chocolate uh, cocoa that we produce for chocolate. So I think this is one of the the, 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 the areas, one of the crops that the Trinidad, the government, the private sector um, has targeted as one of the crops for real future investment. Another, another point as well is that the AgriMaps application has data on cocoa. So if you if you have an, an area of land already uh, that is that you're thinking about planting cocoa, you could actually use the AgriMaps, find that location on the map, and it can give you uh, recommendations of how to make your soil suitable for that. Yes. Okay. And just while you're um, addressing that, we have a user that's currently trying to download the map app and not finding it. I'm not sure if you have any advice on an easy way to find it in the Play Store. Sure. So, yeah. on the Play Store itself, you can search AgriMaps. Oh, Agri yeah. yeah. Or, yeah, AgriNet as well. You can search AgriNet with two T's, A G R I N E T T. Yeah. And all three applications should show up. So, if you're having some difficulties, um, finding it. Yes. Yeah. You can check on our website as well. We have links on the front page to the applications. And also, if you look on the projects folder, you can see a link to the web application if you're interested in that. OK. And just to follow up to the GMO question, it's now phrased in a more ICT format. In what way, using ICT, can farmers be educated about all the GMO products? Um, again, using the methods of information and communication technology. Let me take a, a stab at it. Um, one thing is that that was called for during maybe the latter end of the project. Business. You know, farmers were saying that you know it it would be good if if a, if we have an application that could allow us to get more information about the things like the pesticides, the seeds, and these sort of things. But I think it's phrased into you know a related to the question that's being asked. One thing that we realize is that farmers take a lot of advice from each other. They also take a lot of advice from um, officers. So even going back to the question I was asked before about the, you know, the success of agriculture, and a lot of the success of agriculture is really based on the knowledge of people within agriculture, not necessarily always the garden shops, right? But, um, but as it relates to GMO, a lot of uh, information can be shared in terms of what seeds or how to treat with seeds uh, to get the highest yield as opposed to being dependent on specific yields and stuff like that. You know, there is room for farmers to share with each other uh, information and, and ICT could actually play a role in that in that sharing process. As it is right now, AgriNet does not deal with any uh, issues pertaining to that. But again, what we're saying is that we, we don't monopolize the space if somebody can think through 
how they can actually use ICT to facilitate that sharing uh, process, which is something that the farmers themselves have called for, you know, that can be used to deal with, with issues pertaining to seed quality and GMOs and, and productivity yields and those sort of issues. Thank you. Given the issue of excessive pesticide use in the Caribbean, do you believe the AgriDiagnose app can assist in providing alternative non-pesticide treatments for crops affected? Or is there a, a, still a focus on use of pesticides with the application? Um, so in the application right now, how it, how it looks at uh, possible treatments is that it proposes a variety of treatments. So for example, I, I think I should go a little cultural treatment. Um, there are also chemical treatments that would be recommended, well, suggested, sorry. But yeah, there, there are a variety of treatments that we look at. How the system really works is um, it's there's the pathology back end, and um, you got plenty of it up on that. Oh, oh, the pathology part of it is that we've modeled the diseases under a number of different categories, and we've actually had real pathologists provide the information and we've also searched literature and find information on these diseases. And so whatever is known about the treatment of a given disease is captured in the app. So if there are possible treatments that are not, um, not pesticides, that's captured in the app. So it gives the, it gives the farmer a range of things. Some, some of the things under the cultural will be related to the time you water the plant, the amount of sun it gets, those kinds of things, not, not necessarily fertilizer or pesticide. Okay, thank you. We have quite a few participants who are asking about collaboration. So I just want to let you all know that in about five minutes, I'm going to again put up the screen with the contact information for Dr. Bernard and team. And you can, of course, contact them directly about any initiatives that you'd like them to be a part of. So moving along, some years ago, a former minister of agriculture coined the catchphrase making agriculture sexy. So to what ex extent do you believe this catchphrase can be used as a marketing and promoting tool to encourage or influence young men to gravitate toward a career in agriculture and farming? <laughs> um, you know, I think we alluded to this before where we talked about the fact that, um, you know, I think a lot of times people see agriculture as the strictly backbreaking work outside in the hot sun. And while, you know, that is in, in unavoidable, you know, what is, what is, is, what is a, a more evolving reality is that, you know, there's a lot of technology can be used to in, improve the workflow, improve productivity. And technology here is not just, you know, in mobile phones and laptops and, and the devices and the technology has a very wide meaning in this context. But particularly for the younger generation, you know, being able to see, you know, this thing as a business, being able to keep track of my business, being able to use my phone and devices that I typically now use for just entertainment to become a vital part in the management of my farm and, 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 and my produce and being able to access markets and understand price and see how price um, goes on. I think we live in an age where, you know, it's difficult for us to foresee how we could do something without technology. So seeing technology as a critical part of agriculture can provide a certain appeal to it. You know, yeah. we alluded to before the, with the fact that, you know, if as people adopt these technologies that, you know, young students who study ICT uh, related work, engineering, uh, IT or computer science, could actually begin to see potential for growth, potential for businesses, and all of that is related to making uh, agriculture sense. Thank you. I'm just going to let you address these two questions that relate to the cost. Um, will there be a cost attached to accessing the apps? And for those outside of TNT who want to add data to the apps, is there a monetary charge to do so? so two questions. Currently, there's no cost to accessing the apps. The three apps that we have um, uh, already made available, they're free. The but as I, they're free to download and use. But as I explained earlier, only the Agri Expense app will be completely um, able to be used fully because 
that doesn't require any data being sent to the phone. The data is being input by the farmer. For the other two apps, the Agri Price and the Agri Maps, those, those two apps require data to be sent to the phone and the, the data uh, specific to a particular country. So while you can download the apps freely anywhere in the world, if you are in, let's say, Jamaica, and you, you move to Jamaica in the app, in, in AgriMaps, you just get no data available until, uh, but I use Jamaica because we're currently working with the ministry there in, in, in um, Jamaica to roll out AgriMaps with the data for Jamaica. And we, it would have to be that kind of collaboration for any other country in those countries. And we're hoping to, to, to have agri diagnosed. We think this is one, a real, very, very important app for the, for the country to have that one rolled out sometime soon. But I don't have a timetable on that. Okay, thank you. And relating to AgriMaps, is there data on the location of markets and the crops they buy and sell? Uh, right now, no. there is. Um, there may be in the market itself. There may be some information regarding the specific markets around the country. So, for example, as a base map in the application, we use Google Street Maps, kind of similar to Google Maps. So, it could have some information on that. But we ourselves, we don't provide a layer saying okay, these are the maps in the country and who are specific going to that. That's something that we can look at in the future. But we found out in Trinidad there aren't really that many markets. So. Um, there wasn't much use of the app information right at this point in time. Yeah, and there's a potential for commercializing <laughs> some of these apps as well. For example, we may have agricultural shops who may want to advertise um, their location and advertise their price or something on the site, and we can, you know, work with some of these to be able to have their data um, come up on the site. So there's a potential. Right now, we don't have that in place. Thank you. So thank you very much for that. Currently, I believe our users would be seeing your contact information on their screens. What we have now is a couple requests for collaborations. I'd read one of them. In Jamaica, they would like to expose students of agriculture at the secondary level to the value of the Agri Expense app. So would you be able to write, provide support and training of its use to these students? What I'd also do is share, um, I'd share these questions with you users who have sent in their email addresses. I'd share the email addresses with the team. The viewers currently have your contact information on their screen. Please do take note of it, the can PowerPoint. I, can I add something on yeah. the Jamaica one? Our team will be in Jamaica working with persons from the Ministry of Agriculture there in July. So if you contact us, we may be able to um, link up with you while we're in Jamaica. Okay, great. And of course, the PowerPoint with the contact information would be available on the Caribbean Future Forum website, on the AgriNet website as well. So I think now, given our time constraints, we would have to end. Thank you so much again to our presenters. I think this was a very fruitful discussion. Um, thank you to our viewers and participants. Thank you for sending in your questions, your comments. Of course, they're very useful in improving, improving um, the project and going forward. I'm sure yes. that our speakers are very thankful for them. Thank you, of course, to our Caribbean Future Forum partners and our team here. We'd like to just remind you to keep updated with all the activities online at CaribbeanFutureForum.com. If you could share the name of your website, I mean verbally, but it's, it's uh, the, the, the agri yeah. yeah. Okay, it's sba.bv.edu slash um, It's also, if you Google search agri you can mm -hmm. probably find it there as well. Right. So you can, of course, keep updated via those means. So thank you again for participating, and we will see you at our next webinar. Thank you so much. Right. If you have anything in closing that you'd like to say. Good. We're very happy for the questions, because it will help us to think through some of the things that are uh, your concerns. And we just hope that the Agrinet project will continue to grow and really have the impact in the Caribbean as we think it can. OK, thank you so much.